For millions of years, man was only a minor figure on this beautiful planet. An animal competing for food and living space in a world which had both in abundance. But even as his generations migrated across the globe, still the world remained largely unaware of his presence until he invented the first tool. Through the use of tools, man extended the range and strength of his arms, giving him the capability to mold his environment to suit his needs. From this moment on, his climb to power on the planet accelerated. And then, to clinch the matter, there came the machine, amplifying the power of his muscles a thousandfold and more. In one great surge, man became at once the supreme ruler and the supreme despoiler of his planet. The Industrial Revolution changed the face of the world at a breathtaking pace. Hills and valleys which had remained unchanged since the beginning of time were torn apart in the quest for mineral wealth. It's easy to forget the scope of this change, mainly because we're not really a part of it anymore. But to get an idea of its scale, it's only necessary to look at countries that were directly affected by it. Britain, Germany, the USA, which enjoy amazingly high standards of living. And compare this with the countries of Central Africa and Southeast Asia, which were never touched by it. And now we're on the brink of the computer revolution. It'll run its course not in a century, but in one or two decades. It's an era when we'll amplify the power of our brains many, many times in the way that the machines of a hundred years ago amplified the power of our muscles. Most people know by now that a microprocessor, or a chip as it's often called, is an incredibly tiny computer. And there's a general feeling that it represents a dramatic breakthrough in technology. But few realize just how dramatic. Commercial computers have been around for about a quarter of a century, and they've increased in power and efficiency, shrunk in size and cost on a scale which is almost incredible. If the same advances had taken place in the motor car industry, today you'd be able to buy this Rolls Royce for £1.65. How many miles do you think it would do to the gallon? About three million. And if you were interested in miniaturization, which you wouldn't be, you could get three of them on a pin's head. Most people's reactions to this is fantastic, but so what? Who wants all these cheap computers anyway? And what possible good can they do for me? To understand that, we need to know something about what a computer is, what it does, and what it can and will do. We're not going to be talking a lot of incomprehensible technology, which fortunately isn't necessary for one to understand the significance of the microprocessor. All one needs to know is the basic principle of how a machine can count 